Good morning, folks. Today we've got solar wind to watch, sunspots, an earthquake outlook, and our top stories. But we're going to begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding the last day on our star was calm once again. Minor surface surges and shifts are overshadowed by the massive incoming northern coronal hole. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Solar flaring continues its flatline. One sunspot group departed to the right yesterday while that group born near center disk matured and gained a lateral spread. It will either immediately decay or begin to develop more sunspot umbras in the center as it continues to spread, but nothing in the middle is likely. Solar wind data here, you see speed dropping out in purple while density above it rises slightly. Earth is calm, and in fact we just had a zero day, more than three, three hour blocks of zero in a row with the average of less than one for the whole day. It might sound nice and calm, but our app beta testing put out a cosmic ray warning because of it, cardiac and stroke risks. Anyway, the calm won't last long. Solar wind from the smaller departing coronal hole could give a storm activity today or tomorrow, which sets up to fight and counter the earthquake watch building due to this coronal hole. Which energy will arrive first? Hmm. While we await that outcome, let's run our weather quickly to see some areas on alert if the solar wind isn't so intense. First, looking east we will have snow coming down the western convergence edge of that low. That'll be fun. But out west is where we have the earth spot. It is approaching Cascadia today. This is also happening in New Zealand where an earth spot just left Australia and readies to cross the fault lines there. Remember, all alert zones are posted on our Twitter page. Moving to Europe, who's not without a story of its own, but it's meteorological as the North Atlantic lows driving heavy precipitation across parts of the southwest land and into the coastal Mediterranean. Back to quake-relevant earth spots. That's one in the northern Indian Ocean there. Roughest go weather-wise will be for the nation sitting just east of India. And last but not least, the zones surrounding the South Atlantic. No quake-relevant earth spots, but... The system we showed in previous day's news that crossed over South Africa at the end of the week was tremendous. A major hailstorm caused serious damage and a bit of a flash flood. Top stories today are these. Bad news for ExoMars. Lander's premature thruster cutoff left it to drop 2-4 to four kilometers above the ground. And folks, if true, this thing is gone, and they even say the thruster might have exploded upon impact. In reconnaissance images, we can see the actual crash site. More high-def images come next week from a better camera, but we can still see the parachute released in white down at the bottom. And up top, that is the actual crash site. Can't wait for the HD images. Lastly, folks, many of you have heard about the geoelectric hazard map for the United States, which notably leaves out the eastern half and the U.S. southwest. Well, now we've got one for Australia as well, except it is paywalled. We're going to have a deeper look episode coming up on these maps and exactly what they mean during solar storms, but before we do that, it is Saturday today, so our weekly podcast will air in just a few hours over at suspiciousobservers.org. Full house top topics are expected. A quick housekeeping note, there are less than 10 VIP tickets left for observing the frontier. I also know the hotel is expecting to sell out that weekend. Don't let the room go to some corporate meeting attendee. There should be an observer in there. Anyway, we've already seen the weather, so we've got shots of our star to close. It's 4.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.